uh, people who are committing terror attacks who are inspired by as opposed to uh, operationally guided by ISIS. So the fact that you destroy ISIS doesn't necessarily have an impact on these Western attackers. I, I, we don't have to get into a definitional argument here. What do you actually do to fight that? To get the lone wolf lunatics. That's a better way to say There's it. no such thing as a lone wolf. You do know that. That was a phrase invented by the last administration to make Americans stupid. There has never no, been, sir. never been a serious attack. Let me finish. There has never been a serious attack or a serious plot that was unconnected from ISIS or Al-Qaeda, at least through uh, the ideology and the TTPs, the tactics, the training, the techniques and the procedures that they, they supplied through the Internet. Never happened. It's bogus. This is an international global threat. What we have to do now is not only destroy organizations like ISIS, which we are doing, they will be annihilated, but also delegitimize the ideology so it will become as heinous and as rejected as fascism and Nazism is today, that black flag of ISIS has to be globally rejected like the swastika, and we will work with our Muslim partners to overtly and covertly delegitimize their message. That's the definition of victory. When people don't want to become jihadis, that's when we will have won. Well, let's talk about a different kind of partners. Let's talk about the mosque in Minneapolis that was attacked. We've heard from Governor Mark Dayton calling it a terror attack, this attack that took place over the weekend. Will the White House be commenting on it? Uh, when we have some kind of uh, finalized investigation, absolutely. So, you know, all, there's, a gr there's a great rule. All initial reports are false. You have to check them. You have to find out who the perpetrators are. We've had a series of crimes committed, alleged hate crimes by right-wing individuals in the last six months that turned out to actually have been propagated by the left. So let's wait and see. Let's allow the local authorities to provide their assessment and then the White House will make its comments. But sir, the president commented on an attack that took place in London just a couple months ago before we had additional information confirming exactly what happened. Well, sometimes an attack is unequivocally clear for what it is. When somebody shouts Allah Wakbar as they're stabbing a police officer, it's pretty clear it's not a case of the mafia robbing a bank. Wouldn't you say so? So you think that somebody throwing a bomb into the window of a mosque, it could be something else. It could be, it's, it's fuzzy ground as to the what The question of who be. does it is a question. When you've had people fake hate crimes in the last six months with some regularity, I think it's wise, don't you, to find out what exactly is going on before you make statements statements when in fact they could turn well, out to be not sir, who you are expecting? You, you don't have to make a statement about who did it, but you can make a public statement denouncing how terrible it would be to attack a, a building of worship. That's fine, and I'm sure the president will do that. And why do you think he hasn't? I mean, it's not like in the last 48 hours the president hasn't tweeted. He's tweeted about his base. He's tweeted about uh, a U.S. senator. He's tweeted about the failing New York Times, and he's made no mention of that mosque. He's also made no mention of the three fallen uh, Marines who lost their lives off the coast of Australia. I'm not going to give social media advice to a man who basically won the election in large part thanks to his understanding of social media and to destroy the fake news industrial complex's predictions about who would win the last election. So just hold your horses, count to ten, and the president will do what he 